there are many instances where the question that you're dealing with are simple enough that it falls into one of the models called BREs, basic random ex experiments. So uh, things that we've done so far is uh, the case when uh, outcomes are equally likely. And then there is another type called Bernoulli trials. And this, this is, uh, I didn't name it as such, but binomial PDF, binomial distribution, okay? That we just solved. And uh, uh, if you have a binomial distribution with n equals to one, that special case is a different name. Bernoulli distribution. So maybe I should just write also the uh, way that people write this. People write this as B and P, where N is the number of trials, and P is the probability of one being a success or failure. Bernoulli distribution would be B1P, and N is 1. OK, and then. Uh, there's something we haven't done so far, so I, I want to uh, introduce to you two, or actually three more <coughs> BREs, and these are geometric distribution, G and P, and then there's the hyper, oh no, hypergeometric is a different one, okay. So uh, these three trials uh, uh, have the, the common feature that anytime you do the trial, uh, you're doing it in the same condition, OK? So binomial trial uh, distribution is like uh, in the previous example that we were doing, we, we call a random person up and ask, Hey, do you know our company's brand? Do you, do you recognize uh, this brand? And and, and uh, the probability will always be 40 percent, right? Because that's our assumption. Okay? Uh, so that probability, anytime you try something, if the probability doesn't change, those kinds are called Bernoulli trials. Right? And uh, of course, uh, because that's the example that we just did, that. Uh, binomial distribution is an example of a Bernoulli trial. Bernoulli distribution is also a uh, Bernoulli trial because uh, it's the same thing with n equals to 1. Uh, geometric, I'll, I'll uh, explain a bit later. And there are two more. There's the hypergeometric and then Poisson distribution. So let me try to explain the, the three things that I haven't explained so far. Okay. So first, uh, geometric. Uh, geometric distribution is, it's the same condition as the binomial distribution, but the random variable x is different. x would be the, uh, the, uh, the, the number of trial uh, that had the first success. 
if uh, a trial has the probability p as the, the success, uh, x is the number of trial that was required to get the, the first success. Okay. And uh, let's try to write down the probability distribution function for this one. So first, uh, you have to do something in order to succeed, right? So this will be zero. You can't have uh, zero trials and still have this success. Uh, P x equals to one, that will simply be P. Where P is the probability. In our previous example of the marketing farm would be 40%, uh, 0 0.4. That's the P value. So in our previous example where uh, you're calling somebody and then uh, we got a yes, uh, if that was your first try and you, you heard a yes, that would be uh, this P, in this case X equals 1. If you called up like 1, 2, 3 people and they all said no, what is that, I, I never heard of it, and then the fourth person, if the fourth person says yes, I heard of the brand, there will be P of X equals to 4. What's the probability of something like that happening? Okay, so uh, if you understood what I meant, let's see if you can see what's the probability of getting x equals to 2. So 2... P divided by 2? No. Uh, so for, for this to happen, then uh, this is like... This is probability of number one person says no okay, times probability the second person says yes right what's the probability of the first phone call coming back as a no if the probability of getting a yes is p then what's the probability of getting a no one minus p, so that's the probability of one minus p. And then, uh, uh, by the way, I, I talked about the multiplication rule before. P of a and b happening at the same time <coughs> is probability of a times probability of b under the condition of a. But in some cases, whether or not a happened or not, it doesn't influence the next person. Right? So. Uh, See, we were doing random phone calls across the United States, so whether the first person says yes or no, it's not going to affect what, what, what's happening to the second person, right? So what's the probability of the second person? P. P. So that's it. Okay, so if you understood this calculation, uh, you're, you're getting it, okay? You can now go to the third one. What's the probability of x equals to 3? you'll need to have a no for first two, right? So anytime you get a no, it should be one minus p. And then you, you have to hear this twice. And then the third one should be a yes. Is that okay? Okay, so in general, what's going to happen is the probability of x equals to k is going to be 1 minus p to the k person, uh, k minus 1 power times p. Also learn the, this thing called expectation value, right? And I explained the expectation value for the binomial distribution. Uh, it's just simply n times p. I, I said that without proof. Uh, the for for the geometric distribution, the expectation value is one over.
So, hypothetically, let's try to think about the following question. Uh, a medical procedure. has 40% success rate. But it could be repeated. So you, you have some, some kind of a symptom and then the doctor sees, oh, we, we can have a surgery to get make this go away. But the surgery is only 40% effective. Right? On the bright side, if it fails, you can do it again. Right? Now, of course, uh, in, re in real situations, uh, often uh, if it fails, there's a reason why it fails. You might have some other condition which makes it hard for the surgery to go and all that. So probably the, uh, when it's a second surgery, the the success rate might be lower, even. Or maybe the first, is, first surgery does something to the second one, and so that's the second one has a better success rate. Who, who knows? In other words, uh, each of the successive surgeries might not be independent, okay? But let's assume that's independent, okay? So suppose the success rates Uh, of surgeries or n n surgery is independent of previous ones. Okay. Then how on average How many surgeries would a patient need? Uh, when you're looking for the average number, that's the expectation value. So, it's all probability. Some, some might be fortunate, they get one surgery and that's it. Their symptoms are cured. You don't have to see the doctor again. Some people will need to do it twice and then they're cured. Some people might be very unlucky and then every time they get the surgery, they're the unlucky ones, they might need like 10 surgeries. I, I'm very sure that some of you listening to this is like, oh, that's me, I'm always unlucky or something, right? Okay, <laughs> but anyways, uh, things like that happen, right? But if you took, say, 2,000 patients or 10,000 patients and went, went through this procedure and calculated their number of surgeries until cured, okay, what do you think the expectation value is? And that value is measured by this one. So how do you do that? Well, RP is 0.4, right? So the answer to this would be uh, answer would be 1 divided by 0.4, just using this formula, which is, if you multiply top and bottom by 10, that's 10 divided by 4, that's 2.5. So on average, people will need 2.5 surgeries to cure this condition. Yeah, that, uh, this is uh, geometric. So I, I will... Uh, defer this proof. This is easier than the NP for the binomial. Uh, so I still want to show you, but I'll defer this proof after I introduce the other ones, okay? All right, so that's geometric. Uh, any questions on the geometric? Okay. Let's think about the hypergeometric distribution. For the hypergeometric distribution, well, uh, the, the naming conventions uh, are a bit tricky. You might ask, why is this one called geometric? Well, 
It's because when you calculate th this thing, you, you see that there's some geometric, infinite geometric series involved. That's where the name comes from. Now this next one has uh, is called hypergeometric because there's some functions that people do research on in the domain of uh, differential equations. There is something called hypergeometric functions. And the form that you get, formula you get here is somehow related to that one. And these two are not related at all. Geometric and hypergeometric are not related at all. Okay. Poisson is the na name of a mathematician. So, uh, I mean, binomial, I think this naming convention is good. Binomial means two, either success or failure. So that makes sense, but all the other names, uh, really it's, the, the names don't really help you understand what's going on. 